Has it been? It's been great. It's great to have partners. And uh, one of the things that I really enjoyed uh, at Bioware Pandemic is how we talked about the pandemic. And now, on a broader level, we have tons of our partners. There's lots of people who can ask for advice and get, get feedback on our products and, and just help them make, make you know, basically help uh, make us more even more successful. So I think it's been a, it's been a fantastic experience. And there's lots of opportunities for synergy between studios. And we've had a lot of autonomy at the same time. So it's really nothing has changed on a, on a development level or you know, in, ter in terms of day-to-day -day operational level. It's actually other than just accelerating us and helping us to be better. You know, we have well, doing marketing and PR, direct to community, you know, consumer kind of activities. And you know, effectively, we're a business unit, a division of a publisher. You know, doing, doing development work and also doing the PR and marketing and working with the sales work. And it's been fantastic. I would say, um, you know, something we've actually done before, um, you know, in the Baldur's Gate series, you know, all the way through, through the expansion packs and everything else, uh, we actually had the same set of continue on. And, you know, it really is something for everyone. Like it's, it's something that you do continue the story. It, 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 as we said, Mass Effect's going to be a trilogy. You know, it really makes you feel like you're playing Shepard throughout that entire trilogy. And, you know, things that you do in the first game do carry through. When the characters that die in Mass Effect 1, they're not there, too. You know, the choices you made at the end of well, and they're reflective too, and you know, it's going to say what's going to happen. And it's, it's the kind of thing that actually makes the world seem more real, and actually, we would want to give you that gigantic, lengthy aspect of experience. And if you couldn't transition your save games, it, would just, it wouldn't have the same impact. Our feeling is that's a key feature that, that obviously, you know, not done often in console, but something that's very important in the kind of game that made. Well, I mean, the commitment to our fans to make sure that all the installments of Mass Effect came to 360, that's absolutely the case. I mean, we want to make sure that our fans get that continuity of experience. And we said it would be a trilogy, so we're planning to continue that. For Mass Effect 2, the, the only platforms we're talking about are 360 and PC. It shouldn't. You know, I like think that we've always got all kinds of schemes up our sleeve that we don't give, you know, give you guys all the details. Uh, there's a number of factors to consider. Number one, one is that you know, part of the goal of the game is to gather this whole gang of the toughest, meanest, and roughest uh, you know, murderers, killers, and the rest of the, in the galaxy. And you know, they're still, you know, they're with you. They're part of that group. And so, you know, there's all kinds of possibilities there. Um, you know, in terms of what might happen after the fact. Uh, depends where the story goes. I mean, you know, you'll you'll be surprised to see how the story folds and unfolds in the game. And, and I mean, that one thing we're focused on is actually, you know, leaving, up, leaving the player in a position where they actually make really weighty decisions at the end of the game. And those decisions and what they've done up to that point have a massive impact. So that's something that we think is very important. We like diversity of choice, and we want choices to impact and consequence. And, you know, it seems true in Dragon Age, where there's a ton of content there as well, and many origin stories and different different entry points to fiction that just are the beginning, that starting point to diversity of endings and different choices along the way towards those endings. Aspect two has the same issue, where there's a lot of different. You start off this uh, in, you know, in, a, in a role and kind of define roles and loosely define backstories and carry forward of some of your prior elements from. Mass Effect 1 if you choose to do so. But from that point on, you get to make choices that have a lot of impact and consequence. And, you know, people are going to see different things. You know, it's one of the fun things about our games is that when fans talk about the games over a water cooler and kind of talk about, like, do you see this happen? Do you see that happen? They're saying, no, I didn't see that happen. So, because, wow, you made a different choice than me. It actually had a completely different ending or a completely different story in the middle. And that's exciting. I think that's really cool to give the players that feeling that choices have impact and consequence. A little funny story to tell on you know, the, the original Star Wars Dice of Public. It was, you know, they, you know, I remember we, we had this discussion about you know, what we could do, what we couldn't do, what the limitations were. And it was, it was, it was actually pretty straightforward. It's like, you know, you can do almost everything, just don't blow up any of the planets that you'll know, hear later in the, in the, in the timeline. There's any tattooing? Yeah, it's got to be in the movie. <laughs> all around, so. they can't blow all around up early. 
Um, so we blow it up later, right? Yeah. So. And so, so, so I think the great thing about Luke Starts is, hey, you know, we both have this, you know, they have, of course, the Star Wars <coughs> universe is there, so we have this love for it. And you know, it's very easy for us to work together and figure out ways to do things that accomplish all the goals that we put out. So it's, 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 you know, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's great because I think, you know, we, we both, Want the ultimate Star Wars experience for the fans to experience. So, you know, play your personal incredible Star Wars saga. It's something that we both really want to see as the key game. And so we're, you know, we work together to, to create a lot of latitude, a lot of really amazing situations that, that reflect the ethos of Star Wars. And what we, know. we actually really see uh, like a license like that. Be almost like it's a possibility space, and it, it empowers and fuels creativity. Yeah. And that's not a bad thing. Actually, in having a license. It's no different than building an IP and kind of building a Bible of IP like we do Mass Effect and Dragon Age, where, where you have an IP like Star Wars, it's got like it's 30 years plus of history to it. So and it's amazing if you can tap into all that knowledge and you know, organizational learning and a partner with so it's great to work with. And also just like the IP sources you have, like you have movies, you have comics, you have all kinds of books and fiction, you have people that are really knowledgeable experts in this stuff. And having that actually and, and a largely undefined part of the history timeline like the last little public area that we worked on in the past so we know pretty well. Uh, it really enables us to do some cool stuff. And yeah, there's limitations, but well, that's actually it empowers us because you know you know what you can't change. And you know and that leaves everything else pretty much up to you, what you how you want to make it work. And, and they've been great to work with. Really, really good in terms of approvals and just creative ideas. It's been fun.